Hi everyone, and welcome back. In our last lesson, we learned how to sketch the graph of a scalar field, or a multivariable function, by plotting its level curves. We raise those level curves up to the corresponding heights to form an exoskeleton or a frame, and then we connected up that frame to get our 3D graph. In this video, we're going to consider another example using a similar but slightly more complicated function, fxy equals 4x squared plus y squared plus 1. Specifically, I'd like to start by finding the level curves of this function, fxy equals a constant k, and creating a contour plot. Next, we're going to use that contour plot to sketch the graph of our function. Now, as I said, this function is pretty similar to the one from the last video, so this would be an excellent time for you to check your understanding. Attempt to solve this problem without watching any further, then compare your work to what I do in the rest of the video. If instead you just need to see one more example to get the hang of things, go ahead and keep watching. Okay, so to start this problem off, we need to look at the level curves of our function by setting fxy equal to k. Remember, fxy here is 4x squared plus y squared plus 1, and we're setting that equal to k. Hmm, what does this curve look like in the xy plane? Well, to figure it out, I'm going to move that 1 to the other side. I'm going to group it together with my other constant, k. That gives me 4x squared plus y squared equals k minus 1. Okay, this almost looks like the equation of a circle. Last time we got the equation of a circle, right? Uh, but this isn't quite a circle. It's a little bit stretched out in one direction. This is actually the equation of an ellipse. Now, if you haven't seen the equation of an ellipse before, or it's been a while since you've reviewed your conic sections, check out the conic sections resource that I've posted to learn. This is super important when sketching multivariable functions. Uh, in general, though, the equation of an ellipse looks something like this. x over a squared plus y over b squared is equal to 1. Here, a and b are constants that tell us how long the ellipse is in the x or y directions, respectively. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this equation here look a little bit more like the equation of an ellipse. And I first notice that I have 1 on the right-hand side. So I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by k minus 1. That gives me 4x squared over k minus 1 plus y squared over k minus 1 equals 1. To make this look even more like the equation of an ellipse, I'm going to square root my coefficients and lump them into the x squared and y squared terms. This gives me 2x over the square root of k minus 1 all squared plus y over the square root of k minus 1 all squared equals 1. Finally, I move that 2 to the bottom. I get x divided by the square root of k minus 1 over 2 squared plus y over the square root of k minus 1 squared equals 1. All right, so here my a value is the square root of k minus 1 over 2. My b value is the square root of k minus 1. This tells me that in the x direction, my ellipse has a minor axis whose radius is root k minus 1 over 2. It has a major axis in the y direction that's twice as long. The radius is root k minus 1. Now, of course, this only makes sense when k is at least 1, because otherwise we're trying to square root a negative number. So for k values bigger than 1, I have an ellipse that's long in the y-axis and skinny in the x-axis. When I increase that value of k, my ellipse gets longer in both directions, but it's still tall and skinny. Okay, so there you have it, our contour plot. When k increases, the ellipses are getting larger. So let's now raise these level curves up to the appropriate heights and build our exoskeleton. Okay, we have the contour plot of our function, which gives us a description of our level curves for k bigger than 1. They're long, skinny ellipses, right? So when k is pretty close to 1, the ellipses are fairly small. Maybe they look something like this, around a height of 1. Notice that they're longer and skinnier in the y direction. Uh, and when k gets bigger, the ellipses get bigger as well. So I stack up more ellipses this way, and the shape of my function is starting to emerge. This graph looks pretty similar to what we had in the last video, right? 
except this time it doesn't reach all the way down to z equals zero. It has a minimum height of z equals one, and it's not so circular, right? It's more long and elliptical. Fittingly, this is called an elliptic paraboloid. On the next slide, I'll show you a maple-generated version of this graph, and we'll look for some of its vertical traces. Okay, here it is, folks, a maple-generated version of our graph. Two, in fact, and you'll see why momentarily. Uh, you can see that the graph really is longer in the y direction, just as we found. So now I'm going to look for some of its vertical traces. If I set, say, y equals k, that's what I get by slicing this graph along the y-axis. Well, that gives us the equation z equals 4x squared plus k squared plus 1. Now remember, k is a constant, so this is the equation of a parabola, a long, skinny parabola in the xz plane. Well, sure enough, if I make a cut in the y-axis and look at the curve that's traced out, I get a long, skinny parabola. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, let's check out the other tracings, what we get by setting x equal to k. My curve is then given by z equals y squared plus 4k squared plus 1. The 4k squared plus 1 term is just a constant. So once again, we have a parabola, a parabola in the yz plane. Sure enough, if I make a cut along the x-axis and I trace out the resulting curve, what do you know? It's a parabola. 